all arrangements for King Janak's sacrifice had been completed, and to Mithila had come many rishis and brahmins from various kingdoms. Vishvamitra and the princes were duly welcomed. Janak's preceptor, Sadananda, was the first to pay honor to Vishvamitra. Janak followed him. The king said to the sage, I am indeed blessed that you should attend my jagya. Pointing to Ram and Lakshman, Janak asked Vishvamitra, Who are these godlike youths who resemble each other and carry their weapons with the proud ease of seasoned warriors? Who is the happy father of such sons? Vishvamitra told Janak that they were the sons of King Dasarath. He narrated how they had protected his own sacrifice and destroyed the Rakshasas. They have come here, the sage went on, to see if Ram may lift and string the great bow of Lord Shiva, which is resting in your palace. Janak understood the meaning of Vishvamitra's words and rejoiced. He said, The prince is welcome to see the bow. If he can string it, he will win the hand of my daughter. Many were the princes who saw this bow and went back, unable even to move it. I shall indeed be happy if this prince succeeds, where so many have failed, and I am thereby enabled to give Sita to him. Janak then ordered his men to bring the bow, which was kept safe and sacred in an iron box. It was brought on an eight-wheeled carriage and dragged like a temple chariot during a festival. Here, said Janak, is Lord Shiva's bow, worshipped by me and my ancestors. After obtaining permission from Vishvamitra and the king, Ram stepped out to the iron bow case while all eyes were fixed on him in wishful expectation. Opening the box, he lifted the bow effortlessly as if it were a garland of flowers, and resting one end of it against his toe, he bent and strung it and drew the string back with such irresistible force that the mighty bow snapped with a crash like a heap of thunder, and there fell from heaven a shower of flowers. Janak proclaimed, My beloved daughter shall be wedded to this prince. Vishvamitra said to Janak, Send your swiftest messengers to Ayodhya to give the news to Dasarath and invite him. Janak's messengers reached Ayodhya in three days. They met King Dasarath, who was seated like Indra on his throne, and said to him, Sage Vishvamitra and King Janak have sent you happy news. Your son, who came to Mithila, has won our princess Sita by fulfilling the conditions set for her hand. He not only strung Lord Shiva's bow, which none before could so much as lift, but bent its tough pride till it broke. King Janak eagerly awaits your gracious consent for the marriage and your presence and blessings at the festivities. May it please you to start for Mithila with your retinue. Dasarath, who had sent Ram with Vishvamitra with a heart not altogether free from anxiety, even after the sage's assurances, was thrilled with joy on hearing this good news. He told his ministers to prepare for the journey and left the very next day for Janak's capital. Dasarath and his following reached Mithila and were received with enthusiastic welcome. Exchange of courtesies over, Janak said to Dasarath, my sacrifice will soon be over. I think it best to have the marriage as soon as the jagya is over, and sought his approval. Dasarath replied, You are the bride's father, and it is for you to order things as you wish. At the appointed day and hour, giving away the bride, King Janak said to Ram, Here is my daughter Sita, who will ever tread with you the path of righteousness. Take her hand in yours, Blessed and devoted, she will ever walk with you like your own shadow. Thus was Sita given by Janak to Ram. Were they not eternal lovers reunited? And so they rejoiced like lovers who had come together after long separation.